Kia ora, hello, we are a couple, a couple of, of Kiwis. Kiwis and welcome to Gallipoli. April 25th, 1915, World War One. In an effort to take then Constantinople, modern day Istanbul, the British saw that taking the Gallipoli Peninsula from the Ottoman Empire would be a surefire way to take them out of the war. So they assembled the largest amphibious assault the world had ever seen, consisting of British, French, Canadian, Indian and Australian and New Zealand soldiers. The latter, known as the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, or ANZAC, were the first to land on the beaches of Gallipoli, now known as ANZAC Cove. 2,000 Anzac soldiers were killed on the first day. Over the next eight months, the battle became a bloody stalemate, with death and disease rife on both sides. On December 20th, 1915, the last of the Anzac force were evacuated from the peninsula. The death toll on both sides was over 130,000, with a further 260,000 wounded. From 1916 onwards, the 25th of April has been a day of remembrance and commemoration in both Australia and New Zealand. Known as Anzac Day, it is a significant part of both countries' history and identity. Having the opportunity to visit Gallipoli and the battlefields is hugely special, and something we both will never forget. So we're just down at Anzac Cove now where the Anzacs landed and you just get a sense for how stuffed they were from the start. Like it's it's just incredible massive cliffs on the side of us and to think that they landed here and had to scamper up these cliffs. Beaches and water though. Yeah, it's, it looks like something out of paradise until you realise. It's quite surreal. Like the I just kind of like recapped history. I learned it all at school. Uh, but it's given me a bit of a recap with our two of us. So just yeah, it's a little bit of a surreal moment, hey? Yeah. In total, I believe it's around 4,000 Kiwis died here um, during the Gallipoli campaign. Um, and we're just focusing on the on the mm. Kiwis because we are a couple of Kiwis. But Anzac Force in general suffered thousands and thousands of casualties, as did the Turks yeah. and the British. I think it's one of those things that um, most Kiwis and Aussies for that matter have a connection to someone who fought here mm. whether it's a great great grandfather or a great great uncle or someone in the family that you know and that just shows uh, how significant it was to yeah. the people. So my dad messaged me and this is obviously significant he loves war history and stuff like that but I actually have a connection to this place. My great grandfather Patrick Francis Ryan was 21 years old. He landed in Gallipoli on the 12th of April 1915 and he was here for 89 days. Um, he then got injured by, he was struck by a piece of shell in one of his left, e um, left legs or left thigh on active duty in the trenches. So he then got shipped back to Egypt for 64 days and they, they said we're going to need to amputate and he refused to have it amputated so he lived with this injury for the rest of his life. So this piece of land that we're on now, the Turkish government have actually gifted to Australia and New Zealand and this is the Anzac Cove where they have the memorial service every year on Anzac Day the 25th of April and you get a scale for what they were faced with when you look up there. Now this immediate piece of land has obviously been uh, flattened out so that they can have the service here, we'll let the bus go past, uh -huh. but then as you go up you can see what they were faced with. So this part, this big steep cliff bit here, that was called the Sphinx and that was because the soldiers spent a bit of time in Egypt and it reminded them of the Sphinx but that was the first ridge and then from there you've got low pine and chunuk bear and all that sort of stuff in behind. So here we are now at the Lone Pine Cemetery which is the Australian memorial for the battle here. Um, it's very moving and the space that you can see behind me no more than a couple of rugby fields at most. Uh, during the August offensive um, 10,000 people lost their lives here on both the Australian and the Turkish side. I think there was about six or seven thousand Turks and three or four thousand uh, Australians lost their lives fighting for this patch of 
earth, really. Uh, quite a moving um, story around the Lone Pine here. So the Lone Pine uh, name actually came from a song, but the Aussies that were evacuated here took some pine cones from here back to Australia and planted them in three places in Australia. And then in the 90s, they took one of those pine cones from the pine tree that was planted there and brought it back here and planted it here as well. It's not this one, it's the one behind that. Uh, so in a, in a huge cycle, the pine tree is back here, which is quite moving. Right now we are actually standing in the trenches. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and just literally across the road there the is the Turkish ones. And in this area here, there's famous stories of them throwing notes over to each other and jokes and things like that. And grenades. And, and grenades. Um, but like, the grenades went back and forth one to two, three, four times before they actually exploded. So, so that gives you an idea of how close, how close they are. There's just a bus going past right now. It's a road, one lane road, and then you have the other trench. It's just unbelievable. Now obviously it wouldn't have been this beautiful back uh, in 1915. There would have been no trees here, no cover, barbed wire, dead bodies, and then the trenches. Uh, so quite a lot different from what we see it now. So I was in the Turkish ones, look where Matt is. Just across from there. This far away. I can hear what you're saying. So we're now here at the Turkish War Memorial um, and we're going to have a look around and remember the sacrifice that the Turks made also. So as Kiwis we often come at this whole war and this whole battle from a Kiwi Anzac perspective but it's uh, hard not to forget the sacrifice the Turks made too. We've just read that 85,000 Turkish soldiers lost their lives up here fighting the Gallipoli battle and I believe of them 20,000 were through disease, frostbite and all of the, the, just the bad conditions from living up here during those months. Okay, so we're on top of Chunuk Bear now, which is the famous battleground for the New Zealand Battalion uh, of the Anzac Corps. Here on the August offensive is where the Kiwis first made it up to the top here in Chunuk Bear, and they tried to hold it uh, over the next few days, and it swung backwards and forwards between the Turks and the Kiwis, but inevitably we had to retreat from here. But this is the second highest point in the region. There is actually another uh, hill over the back there that is taller. When you see the terrain, uh, it's just unfathomable how the Kiwis got up here in the first place, let alone under fire in a battle. So it's pretty special being here. We often say Gallipoli is such a special place for New Zealanders and Australians, um, but it's important to realise this is also really significant and special for the Turks as well. And it's awesome to see so many Turkish people up here um, paying their respects and learning about what happened. That is Gallipoli. We're currently on the ferry uh, down to Chanakali now, which is where we're staying. But our Gallipoli day and our Gallipoli exploration is over, and it's been a fantastic day, a moving I day, mean, special one bit, we will never forget. A little bit difficult to make a vlog like this, but yeah, we enjoyed it. Yeah, it's one of those things, and I hope this video has done it justice, and we haven't sort of crossed any lines. It's it's difficult to do a video with a positive spin on something that's so dark and sad in our history, you know. But I hope we did it justice and we thank you so much for watching this far. Uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. Yeah, if you do love this video, give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to press the subscribe button because we have more turkey videos coming your way. Alright, yeah, no, definitely. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.